Welcome back to part 11 of the top-down tank battle game. In this video, we're going to be making a pickup item that we can put on our map and allow us to do uh, power-ups, supplies, things like that. Objects that we want the player to be able to run over and pick up. All right, let's get started. So I've started out my pickup scene already with an Area 2D. And for the sprite, I'm using this crate. Now later, we're probably going to add some other types of pickups, and we'll extend it from there, but I'm just going to make one right now that gives the player a health pickup, or, or repair, since it's a tank. And the collision shape is just a circle, but I'm hiding that just so that it makes it a little easier to see the crate. Okay. Now if we add a script to this, what we're going to want to do in this script is set up the properties and connect the body entered signal so that we can detect when the player runs over this. So let's just say for now we had the plan to have two different types of pickups, a health pickup and an ammo pickup. And, and when we choose one of these, we're going to put this in the inspector so that we can change it around if we want to, but we'll make it uh, health by default. And then we're also going to have a vector 2, which I'm going to use to store the amount, the minimum and maximum amount that we want the pickup to randomly give the player. So for example, if, if it's a health, I wanted to give them between 10 and 25 health. And it's just easier to store it in a vector like this so we have two, since we have two numbers rather than making two separate variables. So that's that. Now we also want to connect that signal. Now while we're at it, we should probably set the collision. We want the mask to be on player, and layer we can just turn off. So I only care about the player picking these up. I don't want, if we happen to have an enemy run across it, I don't want the enemy to pick it up. And we're going to connect the body entered signal. And in that signal we're going to depending on what the type is. We're going to say uh, if we were an items.health, if we were a health pickup, then if the body has a method called heal. And we don't have one of those yet. We only have a take damage, so that won't work quite yet. But we'll just call heal with a random number in that range. Amount.x, amount.y. So now if, uh, for example, missing one uh, parentheses there. So, and then uh, if we have an, if we were in ammo, I'm just gonna put pass there right now, we don't have anything yet. And then we're also going to uh, queue free. So now we should be able to toss one of these into our map. Let's go back over to our map and uh, I have all the obstacles in, uh, node 2d to organize them. I'm going to do that too here. I'm going to add a node 2d and I'm going to call this items and I'm going to instance a pickup which I've put in an items folder. Let's grab this. Let's put one, let's just put one over by the player and let's also instance one down here on the road so we can make sure that the enemy tank coming along doesn't pick it up. So let's see how that looks. So there it is. Oh, there, and I picked it up. Let's let the enemy come along here and see. Let's make sure we didn't mess up our... Yeah, there we go. The enemy goes right through it. Okay. So now this picks up, but it's, it's really boring. It's just sitting there, and it's kind of hard to tell the difference between this crate and any other obstacles that you've made, especially once we have our map all fleshed out and we have lots and lots of stuff on the map, how do we tell that that's a thing that we can pick up? Well, one thing we can do is give it a little bit of animation to make it appear like something that's moving and, and something that attracts the eye so you know you want to go pick it up. And we'll do that with an animation player. Okay, in my animation player, I'm going to create a bounce animation. I'm going to set it to auto play and loop. And what I want this to do is change the position of the sprite. So 
I'm going to click on the sprite here and we're going to add a keyframe for the position. So that'll create the track. And I'm going to move to about to halfway along the animation. The length is one second, so we're going to move to halfway. And we're going to put this at minus 20. And we're going to keyframe that. And then we'll go back to zero automatically because we're going to have it loop. Right? So we have that on loop. So right now, if we did that, it's just going to bounce up and down like this, which is okay, but it looks a little artificial. You can smooth that out a little bit by clicking on the on one of the keyframes and then clicking this button right here. And that lets you edit the key and what you can do is change the transition. And you can change this curve around a lot. I encourage you to play around with it. Um, I like to do, for this one, I'm going to do just a slight sine curve and I'm going to do it on both keyframes about the same, around 1.5 or so. So it's just a little bit and then oh, I hit stop here. So then we can see it's a little smoother, right? So when it's on the screen, it's going to be bouncing up and down like that. And if we look at it in the map, we can see what that looks like. So there's our bouncing crate, right? We can still pick it up, but we can do even better and make it look, look a little nicer still. And we'll do that by adding a shadow. And if we drop that in the texture, You'll see it's a little bit too big so we're going to scale it down and we also need to move it down so it's below the sprite itself so i'm going to move it down about 20 pixels or so and i'm going to change the scale and we want to make it a lot thinner narrower and thinner so the y maybe 0.5 and the x maybe point three two five okay and I think we'll maybe we'll move it down a little bit further okay and so what we want this shadow to do is we're going to scale it down even a little bit more as you as the cube rises up and down and then we're also going to fade it out just a little bit. So we're going to change its scale. We're going to animate its scale and its modulate. All right, so let's take the shadow scale and we're going to start with it the size it is now. And at the halfway point when the box is at its highest, we're going to shrink it down. And I want it to be proportional, so I'm going to use the same amount. I'm just going to divide by 1.5, which is going to give me about, you know, it's going to give me two thirds of the size and then we'll just keyframe that and now we'll have a nice shrinking shadow and now I want to play with the opacity a little bit because it's way too dark so again at the front we're gonna start with the shadows modulate and I'm gonna put the alpha just a little bit above half and I'm gonna keyframe that and then at the end, I'm going to drop it to just a little below half, maybe a third, and I'm going to keyframe that. And that way we have a nice fading shadow. Okay, and in our main scene, that's going to look a lot nicer. We have a nice little shadow on our box. Now the remaining thing is, I want to be able to indicate what kind of pickup this is. So when the player sees this box, uh, how are they going to know whether it's a health pickup or an ammo pickup or some other kind of pickup that we do later, or big bonuses or equipment, who knows what. So we need some sort of symbol telling us what kind of crate it is. So we're going to add one more sprite here. And this one is going to be, we're going to call this the icon. And this one is going to use uh, in the assets folder this wrench image that I have. And we're going to take that, we're going to put it, uh, let's see, we're going to shrink it down a little bit like that. And then we're going to move it up, say, 
yeah, up above the crate. And then we're going to animate some of that too. So I'm going to animate the scale to have it change size. And I'm also going to animate the transparency so that it will give a little pulsing effect. So we're going to take this and we're going to keyframe the scale. And at the end, we're going to go down to half the size. Keyframe that. And then we're going to fade it out. And I'm not spending a lot of time on this because I might, you know, down the road, do some particle or some uh, shader effects for these some of these things. Uh, I don't want to really get into that yet, but for right now, we can get pretty far with some simple little effects like this to at least give us an idea of what kind of thing we're going for. Right, so then it flashes like that. And then we can separately, if we want, set the color so that we could have color mean something too. I'm just going to use the modulate and set it to like a bright green. And let's see what that looks like on the map. All right, so visibility is a little low, so we might not need to pick that green color. So we'll make it a little brighter. Yeah, I think that'll be all right. So, so now I have this little pulsing icon. In the pickup script, we're already telling it to heal the body if the body knows how to be healed. So we need to add a method for that to the tank script. So we go to the tank script. We already have the take damage. So we will add uh, heal some amount. And so that will increase our health. Uh, by whatever amount. It's going to emit the same health changed signal so that we update the bar. And then we need to make sure we clamp the health uh, so it doesn't go above our max health. And so I better do that before I emit the signal or I'll emit the signal with a bad value. Uh, okay, so now we have our player should be able to heal. So if we go over to our map, okay, I'll run up here and take a couple of hits. Okay, and then we'll go grab the crate and there our health went back up. Okay, so now we have our pickups working the way we want. We can't really do anything with the ammo pickups yet because we haven't added ammo to the tanks or quite yet decided. There's a couple different ways we could do ammo and how we want to handle that. But that we'll have to wait for a future video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments and questions below, and I'll see you in the next video.